Hello, everyone. Um, hopefully you all can hear me. Um, and you all are here to learn about the Locus Projects open call uh, for the main gallery space. Um, I've put a few links in the chat, um, one to um, the opportunity on the Locus Projects website, one to submittable, um, where you will need to submit your proposal. And then I've also put my email address there, um, all for your reference. Um, so uh, you should be seeing my screen. Um, and we're going to go, th I'm going to go through, um, you know, a little bit about Locust Projects and um, can you repost the links? Everyone should see the links, but I can repost them. Um, I'm not going to actually look at the chat while I'm going through everything. At the end, um, I will. Uh, I will take questions. So I'm going to go through, you know, just telling you about Locust Projects, um, telling you about this opportunity, and uh, you're certainly more than welcome to um, to add questions in. Um, uh, you're, you're <laughs> sorry. I'm reading. I'm just making sure if everyone can hear me fine. If you could just put like a yes in the chat, that would be helpful. Okay, great. Um, <clears throat> so I, if questions come up as I'm going through, you can type them in the chat and I will we'll get to them at the end. Okay, so we're all here for um, the, to learn about the open call at Locust Projects. Um, so I think it's important to understand uh, who Locust Projects is as an organization and understand a little bit about our history and what our mission is. Um, so we uh, invite local, national, and international artists all to apply um, to these open calls that we post yearly. Uh, this one is for the main gallery, which is our biggest space, which is 1,500 square feet. Um, our mission statement is good to, to know and understand and see whenever I'm applying to an organization, I always read the mission statement. Um, just to make sure that, you know, I understand where they're coming from and that what I'm doing fits into their mission. Uh, so um, our mission is to create opportunities for visual artists at all stages of their career, um, to invite risk-taking and experimentation, to activate conversations around new art and ideas, and to advocate for artists and creative practices. Um, oops. Sorry, try and go to the next slide. Uh, as I mentioned, you can put questions in the chat and you can also reach me by email. Uh, so it's important to understand who is eligible. So you can be from anywhere in the world. Um, we are looking for, you know, professional artists that are not enrolled in degree seeking programs. Um, the project that you're proposing should be new, never having been exhibited um, work that uh, you are producing specifically for this open call for Locust Projects. Um, collaborative artist proposals are accepted. Um, it's best if the support materials are supportive of that collaborative group. Um, we are, you know, very interested in, in artists addressing social justice issues, including race, identity, gender, basic needs, climate change, environmental advocacy, and more. Um, we're, you know, a public facing institution, we, um, you know, invite the local community to come in and see these works. And we're looking to present the community with uh, new and interesting ideas of pertinent topics. Um, so what Locust Projects has to offer is a production budget of up to $7,500 to produce this work for the main gallery. Um, $2,500 artist fee um, for the main gallery. I don't really care about the project room one. Uh, 
if you live uh, more than 150 miles away from Miami, um, a brown ship ticket to Miami, we have um, a residency house, which is uh, a block away from the gallery um, that you can stay in, uh, which is very convenient because you can just walk to the gallery while you're um, putting together your show. Um, we have various AV equipment. It is kind of always fluctuating and changing. Things are, um, you know, at various states of functionality. Um, this is just a little overview. Uh, the production budget does support, you know, AV equipment if you need it, but just to give you a, a slight idea, we do have um, some things available. Uh, so I'm going to go through the, these basic application instructions, and then I'm going to pull up the submittable form because um, there's a few more questions on there. I just want to make sure everybody understands, um, you know, what they are and what we're looking for. Um, so you're going to need to give us a project description of this new proposed work, um, the project impact, uh, because the organization was formed based on site-specific installations. Um, we do want you to download our floor plan. You can physically draw on it um, to show us how you're gonna use the space. Uh, the main gallery is a big space. It's a 1500 square foot space. Um, and we do wanna make sure that the project that you're proposing you know, can function in that space. A general artist statement, um, you know, we just want a little background of, of uh, you know, what your practice is, the themes and ideas um, that you touch upon. Um, bio, CV, or resume, uh, three images of the proposed project. Um, so they can be drawings, sketches, works in progress, anything that, that helps your story of the project that you're proposing. Uh, we would also like to see examples of previous work. Um, and then the image details are just uh, telling us what those uh, images are that you've uploaded. Um, so the project description, you have 500 words to really sell us this idea that, um, that you want to explore and produce with Locus projects. Um, so uh, the project, project descriptions that work the best are the ones that are the simplest and the most clear, where you get straight to the point and you explain, you know, conceptually what you're doing and then physically, uh, you know, what is it going to look like? Um, so, you know, think about these questions uh, while you're writing that project description. Um, you know, what mediums are you using? How will it be in the space? What are you trying to convey? How will your idea be realized? How does the viewer, you know, experience this project? Um, if you have to read the project description more than once to understand what you're proposing, it's probably not written as simply as and clearly as it could be. Um, you keep in mind, you know, we, we get uh, 300 plus proposals in for each open call that we do. Um, so we're reading a lot of uh, project proposals. Um, and I can tell you from, you know, the years that I've been helping with the open call, the ones that are very clear and concise definitely uh, go the furthest in this process. Uh, so I mentioned the floor plan. Uh, this highlighted yellow area is the main gallery. This is this 1500 square foot um, space that we're talking about. Uh, the ceiling height is on here, which is a common question I get. Um, these dotted lines that you see uh, in the space there, those are the heating ducts and beams. There are um, columns in the space, uh, but just going back to the before I get to the columns, uh, going back to the floor plan for a minute, you know, we want you to download this uh, floor plan and give us a visual of how you're using that space. 
doesn't need to be anything fancy. It can be something fancy if you want it to be. Um, just anything that's helping us understand how you're using that space. Um, so there's a few pictures of uh, the main gallery um, with nothing in it. Um, so yes, there are these uh, metal columns um, here that are support structures for the building that, that cannot be removed. Um, you can see the the air ducts that are those dotted lines on the floor plan. Um, here's the looking the other way view. Um, and then I'm going to show you just a couple examples of uh, some recent exhibits. You can see how the space has been transformed. Um, this is Jessica Siegel. She came, uh, her proposal came through the open call a few years ago, um, and she showed, I believe, last year. And this is Christina Peterson, a Miami-based artist, um, who also uh, came through the open call. She proposed this project to the open call. And you can see that she has um, significantly transformed this space. Um, your artist statement and CV, uh, you've got 250 words to you know, tell us about your, your practice. Um, themes that run through your work, what mediums you work in, you know, how you conceptually, um, you know, put forth your ideas and, and interact with the viewer. Um, the CV resume is pretty straightforward. We're just looking to understand that one, you are a, a professional artist, that you, you are, you know, focusing your attention on, on making work and trying to, to get it out there. Um, and, you know, personally, um, I like the, the CVs or bios that are two pages or less, um, you know, just, just give us the highlights. We're just looking for, uh, uh, an understanding of, you know, your professional history. Uh, the image samples, um, so you can upload three of this proposed project. Um, which you know can be anything, drawings, renderings. It can be a, a, a link to a video, um, work in progress, anything that supports uh, this project that you're proposing, so that we can better understand it. Um, we would like to see examples of past work. Um, you know, this helps us understand again who you are as an artist. Um, it helps us understand the, the scale of projects that you've done in the past and, and how feasible it is for you to create this new um, project in this 1500 square foot space. Uh, and then the image sample list, uh, because when you upload those images, there's no sort of text that goes along with them. Um, just upload a, a document that uh, you know, lists out in order the, the work samples that you provided and explains what they are. The review process. I think this is really important to understand so you understand what the committee is thinking about when they're reviewing your proposal so that you can have, um, you know, a, a proposal that, that is strong. <laughs> uh, so we do rotate the committee um, for each open call, um, which is comprised of uh, artists that we've worked with before, local curators. Um, it could be uh, local artists, national artists, international artists, um, and what they are looking for. So they're, they're rating your proposal on these different categories. Um, one is the conceptual strength of your proposal and ambitious ideas, scale, or use of space. Um, the strength of your past work, um, so that's why your past work is important. Although the project that you're proposing doesn't have to be um, so directly related to your past work, we just want to see, you know, has this person made, uh, you know, thought-provoking and interesting projects um, in the past that they have executed well? Um, we're looking for unique and innovative approaches to transforming the space, um, and that is an extension of your practice. So 
We're, we're not looking to show uh, a body of work that you've been working on for the past two years. Um, we're looking to support you taking a step forward um, where you're extending or experimenting or, uh, you know, looking at, at new ways to approach your art making practice. Uh, the feasibility of the of the proposed project um, within the budget. Um, you don't have to submit a budget for this, uh, but you know the the people on the committee are familiar with um, you know budgets <laughs> and and uh, presumably you know what you're proposing and if it does seem feasible or not. Um, if you have sort of a high you know tech. A project that you want to propose, and um, it may seem, you know, to us that the budget that we have could not support that. You might want to address something in your project description if it's, um, you know, technology that you're working with, things that you have, um, so that we can understand that 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 piece can be facilitated. Um, and then we're looking for, you know, compelling approach to contemporary art practice, social concerns or community impact. Um, you know, we want to understand, we want to see that you understand where you fit into the world of art history. Um, we're looking for, you know, you to propose um, new and interesting things that we haven't seen before. Uh, so the proposals are due Sunday, May 29th at midnight Eastern Standard Time. We will not accept any late proposals. Um, don't wait till the last minute. I can tell you every time we do an open call, I get these emails, um, you know, very late at night, uh, right before or, or slightly after, um, oh, I had trouble, you know, uploading and it didn't go through. Um, so you need to, you know, make your schedule work in a way that you can accommodate any technical problems that might arise. Um, okay, so before we move to the chat, I just want to go over to submittable for a second. Um, because there is just a couple other so you'll, you'll get to submittable and you'll see all this and, and you go in and once you get in here, you have these four check boxes that you um, should check only if they're all true. <laughs> um, you know, this is these are kind of the eligibility requirements uh, that your proposal consists of new, never been shown work. Um, you do not have an exhibition planned in the future for this proposed project. Your project can be produced within the provided budget and you are not currently enrolled in school for studio art. Uh, once you get past that, you know, gatekeeper there, um, you'll get into the full proposal. Um, and there's just, uh, there's just this one extra question that I just wanted to make sure you guys all knew about, which is how does your proposal meet the criteria um, in a hundred words? may seem repetitive that we keep kind of asking these things, but uh, we do really want to understand in your mind, um, you know, how this proposed project extends your practice. Um, we do want you to, you know, formally answer the, the question of, you know, has the work been exhibited or scheduled to be shown in any form? Um, and if so, explain how it's a new expression of the piece. Um, everything else that you should see here is exactly what we just went over. Um, so I won't waste any time going through that. There are these spots for the video links. Um, I would suggest that if you have a, a, I mean, you can use the video links either for past work or for, you know, image and sketches. Um, but if you're if you do need to use them for past work, you can always upload a PDF um, that has a link embedded link in it. Um, and then there's just some demographic information. 
Um, and then one other thing before we get to questions, uh, if you're not familiar with our organization, or maybe you are familiar with our organization, but um, you know, not super familiar, I would highly suggest um, really exploring our website. Uh, we have uh, you know, a 24 year history of exhibitions um, here. So you can really get a good idea of uh, what we have shown before and um, you know, how the artists have used the space. Um, so definitely go through this and peruse. Um, you can you know, just dive into a year and then you can, um, you can dive into uh, the exhibits and you know, learn about the artists. Um, okay, so I am going to go to questions now. I'm just going to pull up. Okay, so if you have questions, you can put them in the chat or the q and A. I'm going to go back up to the top here and see what we've got. Um, let's see. So I'm going to do this question first, um, which is, hi, thank you for this info session. How long is the install time? Is it 10 days? Um, okay, let me do this question first before I go to the next one. Uh, the install time uh, varies, um, uh, you know, depending on what is needed. Um, 10 days is, you know, I think it's kind of broken down on the, you know, the per diem thing that we support. Um, if you have something that's going to take longer than that, you know, we're certainly willing to, to work with you. Um, if it's something that's going to take, you know, four months to install, that's probably not going to work out for us. Um, but, you know, anything within reason, we can work with you to, um, to figure that out. Do any shipping costs come out of the main uh, production budget. That is such a great question, and I'm, I'm so glad you asked because I skipped over that. Uh, yes, you do need to plan for shipping costs within your production budget. So if you're creating piece, you know, elements of the installation in your studio, and you need to get them to Locust Projects, that is coming out of your $7,500 budget. Um, if they need to come back to you at the end, that is also coming out of your budget. Um, to show your work in the floor plan, can it be as simple as physically drawing over the printout um, of the floor plan and scanning that? Yes, it, it certainly can be as simple as that. Well, again, we're just trying to understand how you want to use the space. Um, so you can you can you can do just that. Um, you can you know just recreate that. Uh, squarish rectangle 1500 square foot space um, electronically and and you know uh, electronically make something um, all of that is fine um, when will the exhibition be happening i don't have an exact um, time frame to tell you um, we do pull multiple proposals from the open call um, we are looking um, it, we're already in the year 2022 right now. Um, so we are looking further out at like 2023, 2024. Um, I am proposing a video event and am wondering about a timed entrance into the gallery. Um, that's fine. Uh, just, you know, in your project description, just describe what that is. Um, how much is the fee for application? There is no fee to apply to this open call. Uh, hi, thank you for the presentation. I'm an artist based in Amsterdam. I was wondering if it is possible to apply for additional funding from Dutch institutions in order to cover the cost of travel or possible additional production costs, or should the budget provided by Locust Projects include travel costs for international artists? Um, you certainly can apply for funding, um, you know, uh, to 
support the project further. Um, if you, you know, have uh, if you have a project where you do have some funding already um, to support the, the project, you can note that in your um, your project description. It, it's certainly not required. Um, we will, you know, help to work with you uh, if you're an international artist. Um, you know, for what that that budget is to to get you to Miami and um, so forth. But you do um, international artists do need to really think about the um, the shipping cost. If you do have things that need to be shipped, um, you do need to factor that in. But you can definitely uh, apply for additional funding. Um, Another question, is there an application fee? No. Uh, when will the action be for how long? Um, so I already answered the when part for how long. Um, exhibitions run from six to 12 weeks. Um, also, as part of the video event is a social aspect of the experience where I would provide drinks and beverages. That's fine. Whatever, whatever your project is, just write it out in that project description. Or, you know, if you're if you're sort of thinking of, oh, you know, I'm not sure if they'll allow me to do this. Um, I would start from the stance of we will try to facilitate whatever it is that you're trying to do. If you're trying to bring in uh, some live termites, um, you know, that might be an issue, um, you know, things like that, where uh, there's something that can, can be harmful to the structure of the building or um, the people in the space, um, then we would maybe have some concerns, but, but most everything else, we will definitely try to help you facilitate. Uh, okay, a technical question. Um, can we paint the floor of the space and can we anchor something into the floor? So, um, you know, just going with what I've just talked about, uh, we will, you know, try to help facilitate whatever it is that you're trying to do. Uh, can I talk about the project impact statement? Um, I mean, the project impact statement um, is that one's pretty short um oh yeah that's right we didn't talk about that in the, in the slides <laughs> uh but we we just want to understand you know the project impact statement is, is also sort of supporting the you know how is this project you know extending your practice um we want to understand that you are thinking about the viewer. You are thinking about how people interact with um, your idea. Um, so those are the kinds of things that we're, we're looking for in the project impact. Um, okay, hopefully that answered that. Um, let me see here. Can a duo of artists present a proposal? Um, I'm not sure what you mean by a duo, but the this opportunity is for individual artists or collaboratives. So if, if more than one artist is part of the proposed project, um, it should be because you're all working on the same project. Um, I'd like to ask a question about the definition of new work. For example, if I've showcased two separate installations under the same theme and would like to create a new installation that combines ideas from the existing installations, how would this be received? Um, that's a good question. Um, I mean, they're all good questions. Uh, so, you know, it's, you definitely can propose a project where there's kind of hints of it, you know, in some past works that you've done, but the new project that you're proposing does definitely, you know, expand um, 
this idea, it, it stretches your boundaries, it, it brings your practice into a new realm. Um, you know, if it looks like, you know, you're, you've, you've created a few projects in the past, and it's just kind of a hybrid of that. And it's the, the new aspect of it is just that you're, you're showing at locus projects, um, that probably would not be very competitive. Um, but we're, we're looking to, you know, to give you the funds to create this new thing and this new idea. Um, but, you know, we certainly understand that, yes, there's themes that run through your work. Uh, we, we wouldn't want you to be coming out of left field and, and you know, be addressing things in your work that, that you know, we don't see in the, those past examples. Um, hi, we are a duo of artists. Is it possible to apply for the call? Um, so again, this is this opportunity is for individual artist projects um, and collaborative groups that are creating a project. Hopefully I'm answering that question. Um, what if your proposal is to use the gallery spaces in a conventional way to exhibit large paintings? How should I word or illustrate the use of the space? Should I submit a previous picture of my paintings and exhibit? So Locust Projects was built off of um, this idea of, of providing a space for site-specific installations, a uh, space that's um, offering a new avenue um, to the commercial gallery world. Uh, we don't sell them. Um, you know, your, your project that's there is, is the projects that's there. <laughs> Uh, um, works that function well within the commercial gallery um, system um, are not necessarily a great fit for locust projects because that's just not what our our mission is because we're we're looking for you to extend your practice um, by means of of, of creating a site specific installation. Um, our performance pieces accepted, yes. Um, so uh, we are a visual arts institution and we uh, define <laughs> we define visual arts with you know all the traditional mediums, including performance and sound. Um, if you do have a performance piece, um, it, you know, we it, it, it would be a performance piece that uses the space that um, there is some kind of activation within the space when the performance isn't isn't happening at that moment. Um, so I would suggest thinking about that and addressing that in the project description. Um, <clears throat> do foreign artists need a working visa in the US? Um, I mean, you're not coming to the United States for a very long period of time. Um, I'm not really sure how to answer the visa question, but we've worked with many international artists in the past um, and it hasn't been a complex process. Um, can an artist present more than one proposal? Um, you... I believe you can. I can't remember if I set up the submittable forms for whether you can or can't. <laughs> um, but I can tell you in the past when we have seen artists that have submitted more than one proposal, it it definitely confuses us, I think, more than it helps. Um, so I would suggest if you have um, more than one fantastic idea, you know, try one out this year and, and maybe wait um, on the other one for another year. Because um, I think it takes away a little bit um, from your uh, proposal, from, from, because we have to be thinking about the two. So um, I've just in the past, I've seen that people that have done that haven't done as well as just proposing one idea. Um, 
I, I okay, is this, this interesting? No, I understand you're not trying to sell paintings. I'm just telling you the, uh, if, if your proposed project is paintings on the wall um, and there's, you know, you have a, a conceptual, uh, you know, idea that is expanding your practice. Um, it's not going to necessarily um, do that much for us when we're thinking about, okay, how is the artist using the space? Um, just again, coming from our history that, you know, the space was started with this idea of site-specific installations. Um, so not that we're, um, you know, trying to um, not consider painting, but if you are a painter and you are integrating your painting in a way that is activating the space, um, that is going to be more competitive. It's going to float more to the top than um, something that is just paintings on the wall. Um, are staff available for installation and deinstallation? Yes, we do have. Um, that's not coming out of your budget. We do, unless you have something that's, you know, really over the top, but we do have staff that does help with the installation. Um, no, we don't have a SketchUp model of the gallery. Um, uh, you know, it's, unfortunately we don't, <laughs> but um, I can tell you, you know, from the variety of, of, uh, proposals that have come in and how artists have addressed the floor plan, it's just been all over the board in terms of, um, you know, either just simply uh, drawing on the floor plan and showing the space or just, you know, creating a, a, a new, um, you know, Photoshop file or whatever that has the approximate, you know, uh, dimensions of the space and what you're going to put in it. Um, okay. Is the 2,500 artist fee a one-time fee? Uh, yes. Um, it is a one-time fee. Uh, so, um, we would give you the production budget and the $2,500, um, for, uh, your project. Um, I'm going to go over to the Q&A section here because there's some questions over here. Um, except there's someone who's going to do have tools available like a chop saw. There are some basic woodworking tools available. Um, you know, those kinds of things we can help facilitate, you know, with some of our connections in Miami too, if it's um, something that we don't have. Do you have images of the empty gallery other than the floor plan? Um, we do. Um, you, if you send me an email, I can email you one. Sometimes when I'm I'm for organizations, I'll just go on the website and and look for an image where um, there's not a lot going on in it and just remove. <laughs> but yeah, I I do I can email you one. Um, are you able to hang suspend things from the ceiling? Yes. What are the the logistic possibilities for that. Um, just going back to, again, we're gonna try to help facilitate whatever it is that you're, you're trying to do. Um, if you saw in the pictures of the space, um, there's wood up there, there's wood beams. Um, so, you know, anything reasonable can be, um, can be suspended from the space. If you look back through in our, uh, past exhibitions, you'll see a variety of things that are being suspended from the from the ceiling. Um, I've recent I have recently done studies for a new body of work. The next stage would be an installation and large scale works. I know you said that this opportunity is for new experimental works, but are there a lot of concepts ideas? I am looking at to explore with the studies I've done. Am I still qualified? Um, yeah, if you haven't shown the work before, if you've been working on you know, an idea, you've kind of have 
you know, I don't know, small scale mock-ups or, you know, have done small iterations that are getting you to this larger idea, then yes, um, you certainly can. Um, I would hope that the, uh, you know, the production budget, the space, the, the support that Locust Projects provides, you know, helps you, uh, you know, expand that, that body of work, that idea. Um, and that's what we're looking for. Uh, do you provide support for artists branching out of their normal practice for this project? For example, someone working with a new form of tech or fabrication. <clears throat> um, do we provide support? Um, I'm not exactly sure what you mean by support. Um, if you mean by support, meaning, you know, if you're uh, an abstract painter and you, you know, your normal work that you do is, is abstract painting and you have this new project that, you know, works with AI technology, um, do we support that? I mean, yes, we support um, you trying new things. Uh, we do need to, you know, see some hinting at going in that direction. You do need to see some support so that we understand that you can uh, create this project. You can fulfill this idea. Um, do we support you in the sense of connecting you with, with uh, you know, um, technical partners? No. Um, you would be bringing that, you know, to us. Hopefully I've answered that question, but if, if you need something more on that one, just put another message in. Um, <clears throat> if you're a local, if you're a local Miami artist who does not need to travel, does the 2,500 go towards the total budget? So if you're a local artist, the, the $2,500 artist fee it doesn't matter where you live. You can live in Miami, you can live in uh, Japan, you can live in London. Um, the 2,500 is just flat across the board. As a local Miami artist, the thing that you don't get is the, the per diem or the plane ticket to, to come to Miami because you live there. Um, okay. You said that's okay to combine old work installation to create new installation. Could you explain a bit more about this? For instance, if I have an old sculpture or video installation and I combine with new works such as sound and sculpture, would it be all right? Uh, so, I mean, you know, it's a little hard to answer these kinds of questions, but I think the thing that is the best way to think about it is we're looking to support the production of new work. Um, so if you have, you know, some elements of, of the, the project that you've created before, but you haven't shown before um, that, you know, work into this idea, um, then that can be okay. If there are things that you have created before, you've exhibited before, um, and you're kind of just kind of putting them into a new project, it's not going to be as competitive as some of the other um, projects that come in. Um, okay, here's more to clarify. What I mean is by support is connecting this is back to the question before. Um, where she was asking, uh, is there support for artists branching out of their normal practice? Um, so what I mean by support is connecting them with staff members or someone in the community who could aid in the development or provide equipment. Um, I mean, it really depends. Um, it depends on what it is. So, you know, keeping in mind that one of the categories that we are rating your proposal on is feasibility. So if you're proposing something that you have absolutely no experience in and you don't really know how to fulfill it, um, it's probably gonna come through in your application. If you've done some research, um, you know, say you, you, uh, you know, 
have never used a 3D printer, but there's a you know 3D printing aspect of your proposed project, and you've done some research and you understand it, and you, and you just need um, you know to be facilitated with someone local that can 3D print something for you. Yes, the staff can definitely help with that. Um, but you need to you need to do the research and sell us on the idea so that we understand that you can fulfill it. If you have a specific, you know, sort of craft um, that you need, you know, as an element within your piece, there are definitely people, you know, in Miami that we can connect you with um, for specific things. Um, but we need to understand that, you know, you understand what you're looking for. You understand what how much that might cost to you know, integrate into your project. Okay, I'm gonna go back to the chat questions. Um, okay, I'm trying to figure out where I am here. Can I open a hole in the floor of the gallery? Um, we have worked with artists that have created a hole in the floor before. You need to just think about it from a budgetary perspective in the sense of the space needs to go back to what it was before. Um, so if, if you can facilitate that within the budget, then, then it's certainly possible. Um, we have an artist dig Oh yeah, okay, she's answered that one, okay. Uh, if we had a plan to show the work for the first time at Locust Projects, but would like to continue to tour the work after showing Locust Projects, fine, yeah, it's absolutely fine. It's just, you know, we're giving you a budget to produce the work. So you're producing the work to be shown at Locust Projects, you can do, whatever you want with it after that. Um, and we hope that you do, uh, you know, you are able to um, get it to go on um, to be at other spaces. I um, think that, so let me know if there's other questions or if there's something that I may have skipped over here um, that you would like me to address and more than happy to do that. Um, I'm just kind of glancing back at the questions. I think I've answered them all. Um, so we're still doing great on time. Uh, if there's any other questions, go ahead and just type them in. Um, okay, are there, are there technicians to help support in case there are technical issues happening with the equipment before or during the exhibition. I mean, there's, you know, someone to help you install. Um, the, you know, you're not, you're not completely on your own there. So yeah, if there's a problem with, you know, uh, one of the projectors that we have or the media players, um, then we will, we will help work through that issue. Um, what is the email trusters? request the picture and submission so you can reach me at oops typing submissions at projects.org submissions at locustprojects.org um how much production time would artists have before the exhibition if the proposal is accepted um, you'll have a while, uh, you, you know, we're not in, in most cases, we're, we're not looking to program anything in 2022. So it's, um, minimally in, in 2023 and maybe in 2024. So, um, and we'll, you know, anything that, that makes it through this, you know, crazy process of, um, the committee reviewing it and, and floating its way to the top. Um, we will definitely work with you to find a time that works for both of us, that works for Locust Projects and works for you. We'll have any maintenance during the exhibition period, or should I include that in my budget? Um, I mean, if your project requires maintenance, um, I would definitely include that in your budget. Um, 
you know, account for that, uh, somehow write that into your project description. You want to make sure that your proposed um, project that we feel like it can be facilitated. So if you have something that does require maintenance during that exhibition period, I definitely would address that in the um, project description. So we understand that and we and we understand that you understand it. Um, okay, anything else? Uh, you can feel free to email me um, if other questions come up. Um, and again, don't wait till the last minute to submit. Uh, do artists who don't live locally generally return to deinstall their show? Um, it varies. Um, you know, we we try to use the um, the residency space to best fit each artist's needs. Sometimes we have artists that want to come and do a site visit. You know, six months before um, the show. Um, and, you know, we certainly will try to accommodate that. And um, we have artists that, you know, want to want to do the deinstall. So we will we'll try to accommodate, you know, whatever it is that fits you and your project the best. Um, are there power outlets in the floor? No, the power outlets are in the wall. Um, there's a good amount of them in the space. Um, I'm not sure if they're, I have to look back at the floor plan to see if they're indicated. Um, we've had, you know, power drop, you know, run up. Uh, there is power up in the ceiling, so you can drop it down from the ceiling. Um, rendering of proposed work means just a sketch of the work, yeah. Or is it a film? No, just, just we just want to, um, we just want to help visualize what it is that you're trying to propose to us. Um, so it can be anything. It can be just a, you know, plain uh, pencil drawing on paper. Um, it can be a digital drawing. It can be um, whatever it is to just show us if there's some element of your you know, proposed project that has some complexity to it that, you know, maybe you've been working on in your studio and you have a small sample of that, um, that any anything that helps support your project description is what you can put there. <clears throat> um, how definitive should the project be? How much flexibility is uh, there from the proposal to the final project? That's a good question. Um, I should have addressed that. Um, um it really varies um you know we work with people who the proposed project and and the installation uh you know the realized installation are you know very very similar and then we work with artists where there is a number of things that grow and change over um you know the time period of producing the work and in both is fine Um, oh wait, is there more questions here? Okay. Um, am I able to apply if I'm enrolled in a PhD program or if I have deferred the PhD? Um, I guess it, 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 uh, it depends on what the PhD is in, I guess. We're, we're just looking for people that are not enrolled in studio art programs. Um, I know in the US, I don't think we really have PhD studio art programs, but maybe in Europe you do. Um, <clears throat> to clarify, we need to include, include in the budget returning the space to its original state. Yeah, you you in your $7,500 budget, you need to think about, yes, how, how to return it to, to its original if you're if you're doing something that's very much you know altering um, the space, then yes, you need to include that in your budget. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to do a last call for questions here. Anything else? Just type it in. Um, 
Uh, okay, this person says it's a practice based PhD, but not taught program. Um, it's probably okay. I mean, we're, we're not trying to get into the specifics here. The reason why we separate out, um, you know, artists that are currently enrolled in studio art um, is one because we, we have an MFA program, we have an MFA open call. Um, and we want we want artists to be professional artists that are already working in their career that are applying. Um, I know people do PhDs at different times in their career. Um, <clears throat> so uh, it's a little, it's, it's slightly a gray area, but um, you know, just as long as you have a professional art practice, um, then it's probably fine. Um, does the per diem cover return cost for an artist to come and take down their work as well? Um, yeah, it, it, the per diem um, should cover, you'd be able to come and stay in the Locust Project's house. We'd have to, you know, we'd schedule that in uh, as long as, you know, it's not excessive. We're just looking to support, you know, you and your work and your projects. Okay. Um, oh, we got one more. Can Locust Projects, Locust Projects, also collaborate with other organizations? Um, can, or maybe it's can the Locust Project? Um, <laughs> I'm not sure what that means. Um, can we collaborate with other organizations? Like you have a big project that needs the support of, you know, creative capital also. Um, sure, maybe. Um, but I don't know if you want to clarify that question because I'm not sure I understand it. Uh, can you estimate how many projects you will fund in this cycle? Um, no, I can't, but it it's uh, it ranges. Um, you know, it's usually can be anywhere between, you know, three to four ish come out of the open calls generally. Um, okay. I don't know if there's any follow up to the can you collaborate with other organizations question. Or if there's any other questions out there. Maybe not. Okay. Well, thank you all for um, joining me uh, here to learn about Locust Projects and our open call. And hopefully, I've provided some information for you that you know helps you better understand Locust, understands our process, um, and, and helps your proposal, um, you know, just elevate to the top because we want to look at lots of great proposals. Um, okay, wait, there's one more space. Um, the plan for the gallery can be sent or can be downloaded in the page. Yeah, the you can download the floor plan um, on this page that I'm on. Um, so any questions that you know relate to this open call, send them to submissions at locustprojects.org and I will help you. And that's pretty much it. I think we're done. Thank you all.